Uh, hi everyone. Today we will try to understand how does glove algorithm works for presenting a numerical representation of text data so that uh, we can feed in uh, text data into our machine learning or neural networks. So first of all, uh, that is uh, the word embeddings that we wish to generate. Uh, so what does first of all a glove stand for? So glove stands for global vectors. Uh, why global vectors? Uh, let me come to that point. Uh, so uh, if you have seen or like if you know about uh, word 2 that is cbow and skipgram so you must know that uh, these two algorithms uh, consider the neighboring words of a given word to form the word embeddings now this can have a major drawback because it can be the case that a word can have multiple meanings uh, throughout the document and eventually uh, when we are generating uh, when we are training it over a particular section so like for example uh, we have trained our skipgram of cbow where apple is taken as a tech company now eventually when we get a context where apple is a fruit to eat so in that case we might not get the correct embedding so what can be done uh, we can go for glo global vectors where we are trying to use the entire data that is present and not just the neighboring words to generate the embedding of a particular word uh, so how it is done uh, so glove uh, follows the idea of word to work co-occurrence probability so what is this uh, let's get uh, understand using some examples. So assume that we have three sentences. He is a good boy. The boy is very good. She is a good girl. Now assume that we have a two gram system. So we will be forming group of two words that are consecutive. So he is is a, a good good boy. Now eventually word to word coherence matrix uh, is similar to a correlation matrix. If you can remember that you have built over some data frame where we get a each word each unique word as a row as well as as a column also now for each word pair that we have that we form like for example a uh and he a uh and boy good and very uh, we will try to fill in the values um, based upon their uh, two gram presence in the text so for example if you look at is and a uh, so is and a uh occurs twice together he is a and she is a so here's a value two Similarly, is and very, is very equals to 1 because just one occurrence. Now, a and a equals to 0 because there is no occurrence where we have got a and a consecutively. Now, once we have uh, formed this word to work, uh, word to word of co-occurrence matrix, uh, the next thing is to calculate word to word co-occurrence probabilities. That's also easy. So, probability of a given b equals to frequency of a intersection b upon frequency of b so for example in our case uh, of where we have calculated is and a the probability of a given is equals to 2 that is frequency of a intersection b that is 2 and frequency of b frequency of b for c uh, for the frequency of is in the entire uh, document is 3 2 plus 3 is 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 so it becomes 2 upon 3 equals to 0 0.66. So this is how word to word co-occurrence probabilities are calculated. Now moving on to a section from the actual glove paper where they presented a beautiful example uh, to understand how word to word co-occurrence actually helps us in understand the meaning of a word. So what happens is that assume that uh, we have these words in, the, in some big uh, vocabulary is uh, ice cream, tea, ice, steam, kitsch, uh, solid, gas, water, fashion. Uh, now, uh, there are different probabilities that are given, uh, given different uh, K. So, probability of solid given ice, these are the words, is 1 point uh, into 10 to minus 4. Similarly, probability of gas given steam is equal to 7.8 in 10 to the power minus 4 so k is getting replaced across the row now what does this mean uh, so eventually uh, before we move ahead with the calculations and show how different k values that we have uh, given solid gas water fashion are related to these two words ice and steam we have a concept we know that uh, solid is more related to ice than steam right correct gas is more related to steam than ice uh, water is equal to the word because both are composite of water only and fashion is a word is quite arbitrary it is not related to either of them now can these meanings that we have drawn out here uh, be uh, drawn out mathematically using these values that we have got yes uh, so if you look here uh, for any k value uh, like for example we start off with solid so probability of a solid given ice upon probability of a solid given steam 
if it is greater than one, uh, pretty good amount. Like the the difference is pretty high. Uh, then it can be taken that the word K is more associated to ice as compared to steam. So now if you look at this 1.9 in uh, uh, probability of solid upon ice 1.9 to 10 to minus 4 and probability of solid upon steam 2.2 my uh, into 10 to power minus 5 gives us a value 8.9 now this is a uh, big values compared to one so this means the solid is uh, much more related to ice as compared to steam similarly if the value is way less than one uh, the k given ice and k given steam then we assume that k is more related to steam as compared to ice. doesn't this make sense because it's the numerator and denominator that we are forming up in the fraction so if the value is greater than one eventually it means that the numerator value is going very high as compared to the denominator and vice versa here now if you look at the probability of gas given ice and probability of gas given steam it gives us to 0 0.085 if you follow this values if you fill in this values now this value is way, uh, is way less than one so it means that gas is more associated to steam as compared to ice similarly uh, now if the value is around one this means that k is either related to both or k is neither related to each of them that happens in the case of water and fashion so if you look at, uh, at the last row of the table 1.36 and 0.96 these values are pretty close to one and eventually we may, uh, we say that k is either related to both of them as in case of water or it is related to none of them as in case of fashion uh, so now we have understood how word to word uh, co occurrences can help us derive meaning out of our uh, words uh, when we are interpreting mathematically. Now, eventually, uh, how our, how Glove uses its co occurrences. So, eventually, what the algorithm is trying to do is to find out the function fijk, where ijk are three different words, as we see uh, in, in our, our verb example, i was ice, j was steam, and k was the four words that we are trying to figure out equal to the probability of k, uh, k given i and probability of k given j something similar to what we are calculating here so we are trying to figure out a function that whose value is equal to this value and when and after following some great mathematics that i have skipped as of now we finally get to an equation where we get uh, weight i transpose into weight k plus b i plus b k equals to log 1 plus x i k now Word, w i and w k are the vector word vector representation of i and k as we saw i in case of uh, in our above example i was ice and k was steam uh, b represents the bias terms and x here represents the word to word co occurrence frequency uh, and eventually as you can see uh, if we shift this term uh, on the left hand side that becomes uh, w i uh, transpose w k plus b i plus b k minus law 1 plus i uh, x i k equals to 0 and this is something that we're trying to fit in in a model so when we would be training this is the loss function that we would be using so eventually what we're trying to figure out is uh, to reduce this value to as close to as 0 uh, when for when trying to fit in our model and eventually using this equation we are trying to fit in a model that generates embeddings for us